Creative Katie, Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my channel. And today we have four tutorials, Index Card of Day 2020, week three. So here's a sneak peek of the first one. As you know, I did a whole bunch of gel prints getting ready for this. And today I decided I'm going to use this Julie Nutting doll that was wearing this red dress. And I'm flipping through the gel prints to find a background that goes with her dress. And now that I have the background, I'm thinking, you know, I pretty much could just put this on, slap down a sayings, a saying or sentiment and be done with it. And that's a quick, easy. And when you have everything in your stash, that's how it is. So these are sentiments from my Sassy Sayings sentiment pack. And I printed this page off on Avery Clear stickers. So it's peel and stick, but it goes clear so you will see the background. I'm unsure whether or how I'm going to arrange everything, so I'm just playing with it. I'm also thinking, is there anything else that I want to add to that background? That background has a um, stencil in it used for the gel print, and the stencil there was linked tiles. And then I decide I'm going to add another layer of stenciling using this dotted ring stencil and I'm putting the red on to match the girl's dress. Just going to add a little bit more red and I love how that just finished it off. It's not perfect stenciling by any means. Now I'm edging this in black and that's something that you see me do quite often and the main reason for that is it tends to frame the, pa frame the page it also often reads with the sentiment that is black. So I'm playing, am I going to put it here? Am I going to put it there? Which side looks better? A good way of doing this is to grab your phone, take pictures, and see what you like. My sentiment says it's from the sassy sayings, if I was meant to be controlled, I would have come with a remote. So I'm just peeling it off and just a, a little bit of a hint, If make sure your hands don't have any um, paint on them because that will come off on the sticky part. Of the every sticker and you can see it gets clear and you can see the background the sentiment doesn't show as much but i'm okay with that now i'm using gel medium instead of my fluid matte medium because this girl is on cardstock and it's a little thicker and i really want it to stick so that's when i usually use the gel medium now if it was just paper I would have just used the fluid matte medium. So then I grabbed this stitched art stencil and did some border on the two sides. Now I'm using the floating acrylic technique with my angle brush just to make the girl blend, give her some shading and have her fit into the background. I'm also going to do a little bit of shading around the outside edge just to add a little more. Doing the index card a day, it's a great way to work on your finishing because you're finishing everything up. I grab my Secura glaze pen in black and I'm outlining the sentiment just to make it stand out a little bit more. It looked like it was kind of floating in there, just the words, and this just seemingly grounds it. And we are done. So here is a picture of the background and then how it looks when it's finished and the finished iCAD. So iCAD number two is a napkin journal and the napkins came from ninniesnapkins.com. There is a affiliate link in the description box and, and, a, and the discount code. 
The prompt for this one was mustard yellow. So I am going to make a yellow background. So as soon as I heard mustard yellow, I knew I was going to use that B napkin. I absolutely love it. And you're going to see why. So here on the background, I am mixing white gesso and cadmium yellow, I think. And just mixing it. I don't want it to be just one tone. So I often mix in white gesso when I'm blending on the page. Then I grab this dot stamp and I start stamping on it and lifting up paint. But then I decide, you know, I'm going to put some white paint on it and stamp the dots on it. Again, I wanted something in the background, but I didn't want it to take away from the bees. This is a subtle addition, but it just adds so much texture and interest. This dot stamp, I, the, it will be in the description box below, is one of my favorite all-purpose stamps. So here is the napkin, and as you can see, you get lots of bees. They are small, medium, and large, and it'll be used for many, many, many projects, including this one. So anything I want to add just a single bee to if I'm doing a floral one. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many I want, so I'm going to take a couple of the medium-sized ones and a few of the smaller ones just to start. And I'm using my liner brush to water cut them. I go back in and I get a little bit closer later on, but I'm right now I'm just separating it basically from the napkin. So I just run the water on it and then it just rips easily. And I love how these bees look against the background. But you know me, I need to do something more. So I need to give these bees a honeycomb. And for that, I grab this chicken wire reverse stencil and my black modeling paste. And I'm applying the black modeling paste with a palette knife. I should have used my key card, I always do a much better job with the key card. A little bit of this kind of seeped under, but I know I can strategically place my bees. Now, because I put the black modeling paste on and the napkin's gonna go translucent, you're going to see the black lines on the bees. And I didn't want that. So I grabbed a piece of copy paper and I'm decoupaging the bees onto the white paper. It makes the colors really pop. And then I'll be able to glue these bees on that honeycomb without the black lines of the modeling paste showing through. So I'm just doing a little bit of fussy cutting here. My least favorite thing. And I'm not going to bore you with all of it. So I'm gluing these down with the gel medium. I've got the texture paste on there, modeling paste on there, and the thickness of, you know, a couple layers. So that, that again is when I use gel medium, and, but it is matte finish because I don't want that shine just where I put that. And I decide to go with two medium sized ones and one small B. The others will, they'll, yeah, they'll be in my stash and I'll be, you'll definitely see me use them. So I got out my wooden stamps and I did a dry run just to get the orientation and the sizing and everything. And then I'm stamping and I'm putting black acrylic paint on my glass mat, spread it out with my palette knife, and then I stamp into it and then onto the page. And then I clean the acrylic paint off the block right away. Now, I'm not trying to be perfect. I don't need it to be perfectly straight. I've kind of let go of that perfectionism, that little part lately, and I really like the look of these stamp blocks. And I'll find some on Amazon that are similar to this set because it's a good basic. And I'm stamping, let it be. 
got my Secura glaze, and I'm going to go around the outside edge just to frame my iCAD. If you would like me to include in one of the iCAD videos how I go from prompt to page, what my process is, put that in the description box below. Then I just need to splatter this with some black splatters, because who doesn't love that? It's a very simple page, but the contrast and the simplicity just really makes it all work together. So here's a close-up of the background, which I love, and I will make that kind of background again. And the finished page. So iCAD number three, the prompt was dandelion. And I decided since I want to do the dandelion in white, I'm looking for a colorful page. So I find this ombre colorful page. I just love, love the background. And I'm grabbing this stencil. It's called Quattro Motifs. And I'm going to stencil on this part. And that's going to be the center of my dandelion. It could be just a flower as it is. So go grab those stencils and look at them. Now I'm just going to paint in a stem. And I'm going to, I was going to use my liner brush with thinned white acrylic paint. And you're going to see me start to do it with that. And then I find and think of an easier way. So I wanted a heart in here because the idea behind the dandelion is make a wish. And my wish is that everybody practices or does a random act of kindness. So I'm drawing lines or painting lines here. Going out and I'm going to have three sizes of lines, long, medium, and short. So it's here that I decide, hey, you know what? I can use my fine line applicator. And oh my gosh, that works so much easier. The only problem is it puts a lot of paint down, which means you have to allow dry time. But you can see how easy this is. Now this is white acrylic paint, my Liquitex Basics, that I have thinned down to the right consistency, and it's trial and error, no recipe. So there are my short lines. It's kind of a stylized dandelion. So I'm just framing out that heart. And then I'm making hearts at the end. For the longest ones, I try to make them the biggest hearts. The medium ones get the medium sized hearts, and you guessed it, the small lines, the shortest lines get the smallest hearts. I'm not trying to be perfect here. But I love, love, love the colorful background here at the contrast with the white. In the background on that gel print was the stencil kaleidoscope and ethereal. And again, if there, I can find these in Amazon, I will put a link to them so that you can see them and you know what you're looking for. So I grabbed my short and sweet sentiment pack. And because my wish is that everyone do a random act of kindness, I cut out the word, the phrase, be kind. Mm -hmm. 
The short and sweet sentiments are perfect for the ICAD size for 4x4s, for ATCs. If you're interested in my sentiment packs, you can email me at creativekatie at gmail.com. Once again, I grab my secure glaze pen and I'm outlining the page. Just to frame it, finish it off, and I'm going around the sentiment as well. And here is the background, the gel print that I loved, and the finished iCAD. Number four, here is number four. Now, all the three, the first three also ended up being warm tones. So I'm flipping through my journal and looking for something in the same tones. So I have kind of a match set. And I had placed this light bulb on this background when I was flipping through my magazine cutouts for ideas. And I thought, oh, that goes. So now I'm looking for a sentiment. I'm going, imagine. So I cut that out. I print it off and I cut it out. And now I'm going to decide how I want to arrange it on here. And I grabbed this stencil. This is one of the cake and cookie stencils, but quite honestly, they're five inches and they're perfect for stenciling. It's called Sunburst. And I'm grabbing my black modeling paste because it's on my desk because I used it for the other, for the B1. And I'm putting this on with a palette knife again. I would just want that kind of sunburst detailing around that light bulb and you can see I didn't get perfect stenciling but I'm thinking you know I can probably put that light bulb and cover most of that I'm okay with it and I play with the orientation do I want the light bulb straight up and down do I want it this way do I want it that way and then you know I thought imagine the possibilities and I turned it upside down now you'll note that on the light bulb there is a maple leaf. Some of you know and some of you may not know. I am Canadian and I love how that maple leaf looks on this page. It matches the colors of the background which is why I chose it. The big bold font goes really well with the black modeling paste. And I'm just using my fine line bottle here to go around the outside edge. Grabbing my angle brush, I'm doing a bit of shading using the floating acrylic technique. And I'm using brown, not black. I thought black would be a little too stark, but it's just adding that little bit of something. And I'm giving that a quick dry. And then I decide it needs some gold splatters. So once again, here is the close-up of the gel print. And then the finished page. Close-ups of all the finished page are coming up. Thanks so much for joining me. See you with my next video and next week with iCAD week number four. That'll mean we're halfway.